Hello everyone, welcome to another theatre vlog. Uh, today I'm going to the Park Theatre in Finsbury Park. Um, it's quite local to me, it's like 10 minutes on the tube, so it's really close. And I've never been there before, so I thought, right, I need to make a visit. As I mentioned in my recent Curtain Up video, I've kind of seen everything in the West End that I want to see right now. So it's time to tackle some more Fringe shows. So tonight I'm going to see Tick Tick Boom, which is a show that I've never seen. I have, I don't know if I've even heard songs from it in concerts or anything. I've definitely heard of it as a show and I know that um, it's one of Jonathan Larson's shows. And yeah, I just saw that it was on at the park and the, uh, I'll, I'll admit the promo photos were so good. I was like, okay, right, I need to go and see this. Uh, so yeah, I'm off to the park theater and I'm taking you along with me, obviously. <laughs> it's a different day I did film the end portion of this video uh, straight after the show and then I decided I didn't like the lighting and everything else because obviously it was at night so I was gonna do it again because I am kind of a little bit of a perfectionist like that also there's some weird noises happening outside my flat and my flatmates are home so any weird noises that is why so I went to see Tick Tick Boom at the Park Theatre which is in Finsbury Park which is probably why it's called the Park Theatre I've never been to the Park Theatre before and I live really close to it so when I saw that they were putting on this show I thought right now is the time I'm going to tick this venue off my list. If you know me, you know that I love to visit new venues and I'm kind of like making my way around all of the London venues. It's actually super convenient to get to because Finsbury Park is on the Piccadilly line. So even from central London, it only takes, I'd say, 15 to 20 minutes from like the general West End area to get to Finsbury Park Station and then the actual theatre is like a few minutes walk from that so it was really easy to find some fringe theatres are quite out of the way but this one was one of the easiest ones to find. I didn't actually know anything of the storyline of Tick Tick Boom before going in to see the show obviously I knew that it was um, a Jonathan Larson show and I I think I've heard a couple of the songs from it in like concerts and things like that. So I was pretty, I was going in pretty blind. I didn't know what I was going to see. And I didn't even know the performers. So it was all totally new to me, which is something I enjoy. Tick Tick Boom is a three performer show. I actually did some research on the show when I came home because I was so, so intrigued by it all. Basically it's, um, like an autobiographical musical that was a really hard word to say autobiographical and it's of Jonathan Larson's life I guess just before Rent they reference a show that he is writing within the show and I'm gonna guess that that is they're talking about Rent though did I google that I can't remember if I googled that but I would imagine it is so there are just three character well th not three characters there's three performers so Chris Jenkins played the role of Jonathan and then Gillian Saker played Susan who was Jonathan's girlfriend and then Jordan Shaw plays Michael at his like childhood best friend and flatmate and then as well throughout the show Gillian and Jordan played like multiple other characters as well so they had a lot going on throughout pretty much all of the show. It was only 90 minutes and there was no interval so it was just completely um, straight through which I really liked I think with some shows if you have an interval it kind of doesn't ruin it but you know it takes you out of it and when it's quite a short show anyway it's almost like what's the point in having an interval if the performers are okay with just carrying on you know i didn't know that the park theater actually has two spaces so i was in park 90 
yeah park 90 and then there's park 200 as well i had no idea what either of them looked like but park 90 it really reminded me of the southwark playhouse i felt like that was a very um i think the southwark playhouse is probably a bit bigger in terms of actual seating numbers but just the way the space is itself uh i've I, yeah really reminded me of it and i really liked the way that they used the the space for the set it was quite quite simple but really effective basically as you would have seen in the clips they had um so the sofa there was a piano and uh, like a crate a table and some chairs and from this they managed to make it feel like um jonathan and michael's apartment another apartment an office space a diner at one point and like a workshop space did i already say that i think i already said that multiple places and it was really fun to watch how they moved everything around to actually make you think oh there was a rooftop scene as well i'm pretty sure so yeah that was really fun to watch to see how they like almost forced you to imagine that it was different places i really liked that so as i said the show is autobiographical and it focuses on like the struggles that jonathan had um obviously i feel like as many creatives will be able to relate to of trying to get like your work out there and seen and appreciated and then potentially like produced and to go on to bigger things so the main focus of it is the fact that jonathan is turning 30 and kind of feels like has all the effort that he's put into his creative work is it is it ever going to be kind of worth anything is it going to is it going to pay the bills? Is it going to be something? In terms of that, I think it is certainly a show. I mean, I related to it. I think so many people in this industry can relate to it. But not only that, I think kind of everyone can because especially in this day and age, it's so hard to, like everyone is so good at everything, I feel. And I know that almost sounds a bit sort of jaded, but I feel like it's quite difficult to stand out nowadays and considering this was set in 1990 <laughs> what does that say about our future <laughs> anyway i won't spoil the plot too much but there are a few things that i wanted to say um obviously <laughs> why would i do a review otherwise <laughs> i definitely have heard some of the songs from concerts before but annoyingly i can't remember the specific concerts but there are some beautiful songs in here and it was like the voices that this small cast had were really amazing i actually saw the first preview of the show and it's a shame because i feel like they had a couple of sound issues at the very beginning when the when the uh, musicians kicked in it was kind of hard to hear them at some points but then that definitely got really better throughout the show um so that was obviously good it was fascinating as well considering that Gillian and jordan were playing multiple characters at some points how how their voices like added to the songs so beautifully like even just as um i don't know the technical terms and i feel really bad for this i don't want to say like the backing vocals or whatever but the just you know like the extra bits like the i can't think of the word and i feel really embarrassed now but they all sounded beautiful my favorite bit of their extra character moments was definitely um there's this scene in the diner where they're playing these really uh, really obnoxious customers and these people exist they totally exist but they whilst jonathan was singing about this situation they went into slow motion and really like over exaggerated slow motion and it absolutely cracked me up it was so funny the show was really really funny even though it was topics that you relate to and it's kind of like topics that can almost bring you down because that want for success and that drive and that journey it can obviously be a massive struggle um, i feel like the comedy elements of the show like we needed them because otherwise it would just be it would be too real <laughs> this is a bit of a random thing to notice and think about but um Gillian throughout the show was really reminding me of um I just thought she'd be so well suited for like Carol King in Beautiful obviously um and then I look when I was looking up like the history of Tick Tick Boom I saw that um Cassidy Jansen played Susan in the original London production of Tick Tick Boom and I, I think it's because of like the gorgeous curly red hair that I saw those similarities. 
and it's just really funny that I obviously thought of Cassidy Jansen before and then looked at the history of the show and thought, oh wow, that's a funny coincidence. I think it's really lovely that this show is still having a life and obviously the story of Jonathan Larson and his shows is just heart-wrenching and amazing. So I'm really grateful to see another show of his and I'm really glad to have finally visited the Park Theatre as well because it was a really lovely venue. I was in a bit of a rush before the show so I didn't get to have a proper nosy at their upstairs bar but it looked really fun and just a really, it was a very beautiful venue so yeah I'm really glad I went. Tick Tick Boom is on at the Park Theatre until the 27th of May so there's a couple more weeks to see it and actually you can get tickets on today ticks and you know what's coming if you watch my vlogs you can get 10 pounds off if you are using today ticks for the first time using my referral code which will be here so you can get 10 pounds off your order the link will also be in the description do let me know if you've been to see a production of tick tick boom or you're going to see this production because you know i just love to chat about theater so yeah do let me know if you've enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you'd like to see more of me in the future and i will see you all soon bye